Good morning, everyone. This is PA and AM coming to you to discuss the differences and similarities between COVID-19 and influenza or the flu. So before I get started, I just want to give a disclaimer. This information is for informational purposes only. This is not intended for medical advice. So COVID-19 and influenza are very similar. If you look in this Venn diagram, it shows on each side the differences between COVID-19 and the flu. In the middle where the circles intersect, it shows the similarities between them. So fever, cough, runny nose, nasal congestion, sore throat, sneezing, shortness of breath, pneumonia, headache, and myalgias, or that just means muscle aches and pains. For COVID-19, the main difference between COVID-19 and the flu is that it has a longer incubation period. So if you get exposed to the flu, the incubation period, meaning the amount of time it takes you to get exposed to it and have the symptoms, is one to four days. For COVID-19, it's usually five to 14 days before people start eliciting symptoms. So that means that you can be asymptomatic and not have any sort of symptoms at all for up to two weeks before you start to get a fever or start to get runny nose congestion. The other thing is that the symptoms that you have with COVID-19 can cause something called anosmia, and that's a medical term that means the inability to smell. So noxious smells, meaning bad smells, could be like a skunk, or even good smells like baking cookies. You cannot smell anything, and some people only have anosmia as a symptom. So the other thing is when you can't smell, you can't taste. And so um, that could also be another symptom of COVID-19. For the actual treatment for COVID-19 and the flu, it is the same. So it's symptomatic care. The good thing is that Dr. Anthony Fauci, if you've, I'm sure a lot of you have heard this already, just said that there was a clinical trial um, on February 21st, 2020, and it was a randomized placebo controlled trial, meaning that they used a medication that's an antiviral medication called remdesivir and remdesivir uh, versus a placebo, meaning you get an antiviral or you just get a pill, like a sugar pill. So they used about 1,090 individuals for this test and it was an international test and it looked at patients from the United States from Spain, Germany, Denmark, Greece, the United Kingdom, and a few others. Remdesivir showed a clear-cut impact on the time to recovery or discharge from the hospital. So it was showing people were being discharged in the hospital after 11 days versus 15 days. So that's a 31% improvement in people's symptoms. The only thing is, is that there isn't a statistical significance in the mortality rate, meaning it doesn't necessarily mean that there has been less deaths yet, but they're still looking at the data. Um, although the antiviral medication is not FDA approved, Dr. Fauci says that it will be available very soon. The last thing that is the biggest difference between the flu and COVID-19 is the mortality rate. The mortality rate of COVID-19, meaning the amount of people that are dying from COVID-19 is one to 3%. So that's over 10 times that of the flu. And the last thing is that there is no vaccine for COVID-19 quite yet. It is estimated it may be up to a year before it is available, but hopefully we can hope and pray that it's available sooner. So make sure this season, starting in September or October, you are getting the flu vaccine for you and your entire family. So time for some good news, SGN. 
Um, I love John Kaczynski. Every time he posts a new video of SGN, I just, I'm tearing up, crying, and I try to think about what's some good news that I had so I could talk about it with you guys. And the best news I had this week was on Monday, the beaches opened in, um, uh, in Encinitas. And we live in Carlsbad, but I went for a drive with my girls and we were like, we're on a, going on a field trip. So we drove down to Ponto Beach, which is in Carlsbad, which is closed. Drove further south. And when we got to Encinitas, there's a beach lookout that is right off of Lucadia Boulevard. And that was closed. Bacon's Beach. And it's completely ripped up and it's still closed. Further south to the next beach called Moonlight Beach. And that was open. And so we got out of the car. The girls had to use the bathroom, of course, right when we get there. And luckily the bathrooms were open and we had our masks. And after we walked down to the beach, we walked almost half a mile and the girls had the time of their life. It was a lot of fun. There was quite a few people there, but people were social distancing and we we're outside. And the majority of the people I saw weren't wearing masks. And um, once we walked back, um, I, uh, my two-year-old daughter got really tired. So I had a beach bag with me. I, it was getting a little bit cold. So I grabbed a beach towel, wrapped her up and threw her over my shoulder. And then we walked back to my car, which was another half a mile away. When we got to the car, I realized my phone was gone. So I thought maybe we lost it on our walk or it fell out of my bag. And we walked all the way back. We retraced our steps while I'm holding my two-year-old daughter asleep and it was nowhere to be found. And so I just, I assumed that maybe um, somebody could have picked it up. I went to the lifeguard stations. I talked to three or four different lifeguards. Somebody found a phone, but it wasn't my phone. And so I just assumed it was in the ocean or, you know, I had no way of contacting my husband. So I saw a woman with a stroller and um, she had two little girls with her. I borrowed her phone, called my husband. He didn't recognize the number, he didn't answer. I left a voicemail and he didn't, you know, didn't respond. So I just ended up driving the girls back home without my phone and I just thought the worst. I'm like, well, I just got my phone three days ago. I guess I'm gonna have to put an insurance claim in. I got home and the girls ran inside and my husband was home. It was like 5, 5.30. And he said, somebody found your phone. Her name was Danielle. Apparently she's an investigator and um, she didn't trust to give the phone to the lifeguards because she's an investigator and she knows that people would take it. Um, we rushed over to her parents' home, which was 10 minutes north of our house. And we, um, I got my phone, it was in one piece. And she, I tried to give her a reward, but she refused to take it. And she said, I'm sorry if I worried you for taking your phone, but I was worried that somebody else would take it and not give it back to you. So she left her phone number with the lifeguard station and everything like that. But um, I am just so grateful. I can't believe like somebody would be that nice. And she was still there when we got there after about 6.30 um, in the evening. And she had three little boys running around outside her parents' house. And she said she was on her way back to Temecula. Um, but um, I'm just, I am so lucky and so blessed. I just couldn't believe that that happened to me. So I love to hear any good news that is going on in your life. So if you want to post any comments below, that always makes my day. Since it's Favorites Friday, I wanted to talk about one of my favorite things and it's called Lip Sense. I'm a little bit obsessed. I have so many colors. Um, my cousin Jackie sells this on Facebook, so she's all out of glosses, but if you wanna find colors, um, you can go to her Facebook page. It's called Jackie Bear's Lip Honey, just as it sounds and um, you, she'll let you know what color she has available. She has about 50 colors left, so just let her know um, you're interested. And you also need a gloss, and the gloss that I have is glossy, but it comes in matte as well. So if you don't like um, that glossy look and you just want like the color that's matted, then um, I'll put a link below to an Amazon, um, I'll put an Amazon link below and so you can purchase it through there. 
The cost for LipSense is $25 and the glosses are about $25 as well. I found the link I found is for a little bit lower than $25. And so the main thing with LipSense is that it's a stain. So it's just like lipstick, but you only put it on one time throughout the day and it stays on all day long. Just a couple times throughout the day, you just add the gloss on top. Um, so I'm just gonna show you how to apply it just so you know what to expect. So the first thing you need is some witch hazel. If you've had kids, you probably have this at home for when you were recovering. And what you do is get a cotton swab or some gauze and you just moisten it with the witch hazel. And you just wanna do a quick layer over the lips and let it dry for a few seconds. And then you're gonna be doing three layers of whichever color you choose. And I think I'm gonna choose Plumeria. This is absolutely my favorite color. It matches my nails. It's um, kind of like a bright pink and it could kind of look like a reddish pink, but it's a fun color, especially for like a tropical or summertime. So you try to make a thin layer. You don't want it to cake it on because then it might start to peel. And then you're just gonna go in one direction. And first I do a layer, uh, like a lip liner layer on either side and I let it dry for about 10 seconds. And then I do a second layer, I let it dry in the third layer and then you're gonna put the gloss on top. Um, and the other thing is you do not wanna touch your lips together while you're applying it because it can, they can get stuck together and you don't wanna mess up the color. So I'll be talking a little bit odd for the next couple of minutes, but I'm gonna go ahead and get started. And there's an, an oops, it's called oops. And what it does is it can erase the mistakes that you make because it stains your skin as well if you don't get it right. And I don't know if Jackie has any of the oops ones available, but um, I'll put a link below on Amazon. That's two layers, I do one more. And I did the last layer. And then now I'm gonna use the gloss and you'll know cause it'll feel dry when you, I mean, it'll feel um, dry when you put it on. And this doesn't need to go in a certain direction. You can just put it on hard. And that's it. And if you're wondering where I'm at, we built this playhouse this weekend. Um, this is a purchase from Costco and it took us three days to build it. I mean, who am I kidding? I built like 3% of it. My husband built most of it, um, but we can't go to the park, but now in our backyard, we have this three tiered PlayStation and it is so much fun. It has swings. Have, we have a lot of fun out here. This is our recess place. So, um, I hope everybody has a wonderful weekend. I'm going to go down the slide. This is PA and the AM signing off. Take care.